What we're going to be talking about today is the gold leaf electroscope experiment to prove the photoelectric effect. Now here is our, our experimental setup. We have a gold leaf electroscope, which is a pretty simple device. All it consists of is a little zinc plate. It's normally a zinc plate. It could be actually a different type of metal as well. And uh, we have a gold leaf, which is placed in, uh, uh, which is placed in this insulator box. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring some charge into the system. In practice, the way we would do that normally is just by charging a rod. Uh, let's say that if we have a rod over here which is negatively charged, so there are quite a few excess electrons represented by these minus signs over here. And if we bring this negatively charged object quite close to the zinc plate, then the zinc plate is going to acquire some of those electrons. So this whole area is going to be charged. Now, what's going to happen next? Well, once the electroscope is charged, what will actually happen is that the gold leaf is going to rise. The reason for that is that there are electrons on the electroscope and also there are electrons on the gold leaf. Now this means that the two electrons are going to repel, so there's going to be a repulsive electrostatic force, which means that the gold leaf is going to rise. It is exactly the same reason that also causes your hair to rise if you touch a van de Graaff generator. Now let's see what happens if we were to shine some light onto the gold leaf electroscope. Okay, well, let's shine some visible light onto the gold leaf electroscope. So we bring a, a lamp, just a normal standard lamp, and we shine it onto the zinc plate. What happens then? Well, the answer is absolutely nothing. The gold leaf stays absolutely put this means that the visible light does not have enough energy to overcome the work function to knock these electrons off from the zinc plate. So if we use visible light, the gold leaf, um, the gold leaf position remains unchanged. Now, something that is really, really interesting is that classical theory suggests that if I was to really increase the intensity of the visible light, so for example, if I was to double the number of photons or increase them by a substantial margin, then I might be able to eject some of the electrons off from the zinc plate. In practice, the intensity of the visible light does not seem to affect the experiment at all. No matter what the intensity of the visible light is, I cannot get an electron to be released from the zinc plate. Now, the reason why visible light cannot release any electrons whatsoever at any intensity is actually really really interesting and I've written it over here and this is because the energy of the visible photons is below the work function of the metal. So once again the energy of each of those individual photons is below the work function of the metal and remember the work function is the minimum amount of energy required to release an electron from the surface of the metal. Notice something which is very very interesting in the photoelectric effect we only have a one-to-one -one interaction so one electron is going to interact with one photon. You cannot have a case in which let's say a million photons interact with one electron. We know that because if we increase the intensity, remember intensity means uh, essentially just number of photons, so we increase the number of photons more and more and more, but the gold leaf still 
does not drop. Okay, now let's have a look at the case when we replace the visible light with a UV lamp. We switch the UV light, light uh, lamp on and one of the first things that we notice is that the gold leaf starts dropping virtually instantly. So this leaf over here starts dropping. The reason why the gold leaf starts dropping is because the UV photons have energy which is higher than the work function of the metal. So what happens is actually that one of those uh, individual photons interacts with an electron and then that electron then becomes ejected from the surface. So let's say that this photon over here is going to react with this electron and is going to eject it the gold leaf is going to start dropping. Now, if we were to increase the intensity, and we can do this in a number of different ways, for example, we could bring the UV lamp closer, that's one way of increasing the intensity, or we could uh, increase the current for it. However, if we were to increase the intensity or the number of photons, like so, remember intensity in quantum physics is essentially just the number of photons when we're talking when we're talking about a light source then the rate of falling of the gold leaf will increase the reason for that is because more electrons are going to be interacting with more photons so if we increase the intensity of the uv source the gold leaf will fall faster and something really, really important that uh, we should also write is that throughout this whole experiment, there's always a one-to-one -one interaction between photons and electrons. So one-to-one -one interaction between photons and electrons. Like so additionally we may also be asked in an exam what happens if we insert something like a piece of glass um, let's say over here so we could put a piece of glass in there well glass actually absorbs uv light so if that's the case the gold leaf will remain um, in the same place Okay, so let's summarize our key findings. Number one, the emission of electrons only depends on the frequency of the light. This is because the energy of an individual photon is actually proportional to the frequency and the energy of, let's say, visible light is below the work function of the metal. So nothing happens. If we switch to UV light, which has a higher frequency then there will be an emission of electrons and the gold leaf will drop our second finding is that the emission of electrons does not depend on the intensity of the light source for example if we had visible light and if we increase the intensity dramatically we're still not going to get any emission and this is because there's one-to-one -one interaction between photons and electrons our third finding is that the gold leaf starts to fall down virtually instantly. That means that the photoelectric effect uh, works almost instantaneously. Now classical theory suggests that if light is a wave, if you had a let's say a visible light source for a sufficiently long time, then enough energy would 
gathered to eject and emit electrons from the surface of the zinc plate. In practice, this does not happen. We can have a visible light source, we can shine it for thousands of years at a zinc plate. This will be a very boring experiment. However, we can do it, and an electron is never going to be emitted. However, if we switch that to UV light, almost instantly we are going to get emission and uh, together those statements actually prove the particle nature of light okay folks so hopefully the goldie electroscope experiment now makes sense if there are any questions please uh, yeah feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know thank you very much